Hi, I'm Nicole and welcome to my Carolina garden. So as gardeners, one of our main objectives is to obviously make our outdoor space as beautiful as possible. Now, I definitely don't mind the hard work. I really actually enjoy it and I don't mind getting my hands dirty either. But if you could tell me what perennials would look awesome in my garden that are pretty hands off so that I can just enjoy their beauty throughout the season, that would be my favorite thing. So my objective here today is to share with you my top 10 favorite perennials that I am loving, that thrive in my garden, and that hopefully will work for you as well. So I'm starting with number 10. So I'm over here at my lemon coral stone crop sedum. So this is the only sedum that is going to be in my top 10 of perennials. So I'm starting with this one since it's a little different, but there are reasons why I pick this. Number one, the lime green color that it has is evergreen. This right here will look colorful all year. That's amazing. Secondly, it does grow little yellow star-shaped flowers on top of it. So you can trim those back over time if you would like. Um, this one has been all trimmed from the flowers except for this little example to show you. But this sedum, it's evergreen, it is low growing, so obviously it is a very nice ground cover. I also have it in pots and it drapes over the edges so it gives the pots a very full look. Because of the versatility of this plant, that is what's making it in my top 10 list. So number nine on my list is Lantana. Lantana is hardy in zone seven through 11. Now, some people like some Florida friends may laugh at the fact that this is a perennial that's gonna be on my top 10 list because I hear that it's a weed in Florida that some people wanna get rid of but the reason why lantana is attractive, here we go. It's a pollinator attractor, so that's really awesome. It has a very nice light citrusy scent that I like. I like to call it like pink lemonade scented. It grows into a nice size shrub. This baby can get large, like six feet wide, six feet tall. So you can keep it trimmed down or you can allow it to get large if you have a large space for it. These are all things that I love about it. I have made it number nine, however, because the flowers are small. And so I like big showy blooms. So this one is a little bit, obviously, less than that. These babies will give their best show in full sun. Number eight on my list is tiger lilies. Tiger lilies have a very unique shape to their bloom. This is what I love about them. They almost look like they bloom upside down. And then of course we have the orange with the speckled, you know, the dark speckles on them. So you can see why they're called tiger lilies. Well, tiger lilies are awesome because they are hardy up until zone three and these babies uh, like full sun, but they will also tolerate some shade. So that's cool because you do have some options on where you can plant them and where they're gonna thrive. These babies bloom from a little bit kind of early summer into the late summer. So they're gonna bloom for a while. You have the unique, like I said, shape and color of them. They are quite tall as you can see. So I wanted to stand here next to them just so you can see how tall they get. And Another cool thing about them, you can cut them and because they are a kind of lily, lilies have a tendency to be um, able to live in a vase for a long period of time. You can cut these lilies and enjoy them inside your home if you want to. Just pop them in a vase and they're gonna last a couple of weeks. When you do that though, just try to choose ones that aren't fully open yet. If you take one with a something that's about to bloom, that's gonna give you the best Time. That's going to give you the most time in a vase for, so you can enjoy them inside. So now let me show you my number seven perennial, which is right here. So these, if you are not familiar, are stargazer lilies. The stargazers are beautiful in their own way, obviously extremely different from the tiger lilies. Their bloom time is about the same though. So these are summer bloomers also. 
The difference with the stargazers besides the obvious shape and color is these babies smell so good. They have a light fragrant scent and if you do choose to cut these lilies and put them in a vase, also they, they will last a couple weeks for you just like the tiger lilies but they make your house smell amazing. So that's one of the reasons why I enjoy this one so much. So both of these kinds of lilies will spread on their own. You can divide them up in early spring, put them in other places of your landscape if you choose to, and you can enjoy it in even more places. The Copper King Hardy Hibiscus is number six on my list of favorite perennials. The reason is it is hardy to zone four. So zones four through nine can enjoy this baby that looks tropical and it's a hibiscus. So that just makes it even better. We all get to enjoy this flower. You don't really have to do anything to it. Once it begins to bloom, it's just looking stunning. Now you may want to pull off some of these expired blooms like this one right here. So the plant doesn't keep sending its energy to a bloom that is already expired. That is something that I do. Outside of that, these stunners just keep putting out these very large blooms. This baby likes full sun and the light colored blooms with the dark colored foliage is one of the things that also makes it my favorite. This one has a lot of height to it as well. That is something that I also like. So if you want to put it toward the back of your flower garden, I think it's a wonderful option. So my poolside gardens have three of my favorite perennials in them. So like I said, this is number six. Let me take you to number five. Number five is going to be my canna lilies, but I'm going to show you uh, some other varieties of canna lilies that I have besides this baby right here. So follow me this way. I have dwarf sized or dwarf variety canna lilies so these babies stay short they're toward the front of my flower bed for that reason and then i have other varieties of canna lilies that get to be super duper tall like these ones right here <clears throat> canna lilies want to grow in places where the ground doesn't freeze so depending on your zone that is what they prefer some people do actually dig up the rhizomes in fall to make sure that they survive the winter they bring them inside to overwinter and then replant them that's a lot of work as far as i'm concerned that's not something i really want to do but they make my favorite list because i don't have to do that in my zone my ground doesn't freeze so i get to enjoy the lush foliage that the canna lily offers plus the super duper awesome uh style blooms that they have i mean the flowers are just super unique So canna lilies makes my number five. Now, as promised, poolside gardens have yet another favorite perennial in them. So let me take you to number four. Number four is my Luna Rose hardy hibiscus yes it's another hibiscus because i can't resist them and the fact that it's perennial is just fabulously outstanding so some cooler zones can also enjoy this hibiscus plant as you can see this baby gets huge it becomes very bushy but the best part of the whole thing is the sheer number of blooms that this this plant gets now, I'm not going to lie, we do get a couple of pests on it, particularly Japanese beetles. They like to eat little round holes in some of the leaves. That could be quite annoying, so you do have to watch out for that. And the other thing is, as I said with the other hibiscus, you do want to pick off the expired blooms just so that the plant isn't sending energy to those blooms. Outside of that, we get brand new ones open every single day. So we are down to my top three. Okay, here we go. So number three on my list. So this is a blanket flower or Gylardia. This is in the daisy family. 
So I have a love-hate relationship with the blanket flowers, if I'm honest with you, because once they turn into seeds, like some of the blooms expire and then the seed pods come, it's very difficult to get them all clipped and deadheaded before the seeds begin to blow away like little dandelion seeds and land all over the place. So I end up with tons and tons of blanket flowers. Now, that's the bad side as far as I'm concerned because then I have way more blanket flowers than I can possibly keep on my property and I'm continually giving them away. You may say, well, geez, that's a great problem to have. And you're right, the, hence the love-hate relationship. But the flowers are gorgeous. I mean, you can't ask for anything more than a multicolored flower petal or um, flower bloom. And so the blanket flowers, if you do research on the blanket flowers, they say that they're hardy to zone three. I am a little reluctant to agree with that. I have given them away to people who live further north than me and they, were, they did die over the winter. So I'm not sure exactly where they're gonna be cold hardy to. Um, but they are North American natives. You do find them in many parts of the United States for sure, um, but they happen to love it here. They love full sun. They love sandy soil, so they're not fussy plants at all. Deadheading, seriously, is the hardest part of owning this plant, but they are definitely top three. My number two most favorite perennial is the Rudbeckia or the Black-Eyed Susans. Ah, so they are in the Aster family. They are tough as nails, these perennials. So they are heat and drought tolerant once they are established. They are self growers. So they seed and woo, become prolific bloomers. So these are things that do super, super well for me. They are cold hardy to zone three. So once again, so many of us get to enjoy these flowers. They are a type of cone flower. Um, and they are just the happiest, most cheerful flowers you could possibly have with this gorgeous yellow. So love me some Black Eyed Susans. So my number one favorite perennial is the coneflower. So this one is echinacea styled and this is orange sombrero echinacea. So you can see that it's a little bit past its prime at this point because it has been blooming for quite a while. I do need to deadhead and then more blooms are going to start to emerge. So that is one of the reasons why I love cone flowers. Some people choose not to deadhead and once these uh, blooms turn to seed pods, they just allow the birds and stuff to munch on them. Birds take seeds and drop them to other places so then they have more cone flowers in other places as well as the seeds dropping straight to the ground and making more right there. So they are self spreaders for that reason. As I said, these guys are a bit past their prime, so please do not judge them just based on the way they look right now. Um, they love some full sun, which works for me because my gardens are all full sun. They are hardy to zone four. So once again, many people get to enjoy the beauty of these guys as perennials, which is something that I love. They are heat and drought tolerant, if I did not already say that, and the pollinators love them. All reasons that I also love the coneflower. So as we wrap up, I'm having a seat with three of the perennials that had made my top 10 list just in a different part of my yard. So I have my canna lilies, my blanket flowers, and a different style of echinacea here. So I hope that this list was helpful for you in some way. If you have your top 10 favorite perennials that maybe differ from mine that would work in a zone 8a garden like I have, please let me know because as gardeners, don't we just love to get every kind of plant possible for our gardens. Thank you so much for watching and happy planting.